Hi guys, welcome back to Introduction to Rust. My name is Tensor. Today we're going to talk about how you can set up a development environment with Rust and with Visual Studio Code. And while I am focusing on Visual Studio Code, you can essentially use all of these tips for really any other text editor or IDE that has Rust support. I mainly use two plugins in Visual Studio Code. First one is called Rust RLS. This has code completion, jump to definition, types and documentation on hover code formatting, refactoring, gives us our linting errors and has a bunch of snippets and it also lets us use build tasks. The other one I use is called Rusty Code. Now this is a fork of another one called Rust. Now I like Rusty Code a little bit more than the Rust extension just simply because it has a few more features. Now this gives us auto completion, go to definition, go to symbol format, linting, as well as cargo tasks and snippets. So basically the way I think about it is if Rusty code doesn't have one thing, then RLS will probably have it. All right, so when you go to install Rust, you want to install Rust up. For Windows, you just get the Rust up init binary. For Linux and for Mac, you'll probably be able to get Rust up through a package manager. And while you may be able to get like a stable version of Rust through the package manager as well, I would recommend getting Rust up because it allows you to easily switch between the stable build, the nightly build, and the beta build. And you'll see that that is sort of important. So after you run Rust up in it with the default installation, it will install the stable branch of Rust for you. You can check to see if it's installed by simply running Rust up and then you'll get this huge help menu here. You can also type in Rust up show to see which tool chains you have installed and what your active tool chain is. For me, I have the stable, the beta, and the nightly. I currently am using the stable build. So let's stop here for a moment and just talk about the difference between the three channels. So the nightly channel is a channel that gets released every single night. After six weeks, the nightly channel then gets pushed into the beta channel. The beta channel here is the release candidate that came from all of the nightlies from the past six weeks. That beta channel then continues to get iterated upon and they continue to close out bugs and stuff until six weeks later when they push it into the stable channel. So basically, if you're using the nightly channel, then you're using the cutting edge. If you're using the beta channel, then you may get a few little bugs, but you'll get less than you would on the nightly channel in most cases. And if you're using the stable channel, then it is probably the most stable of all of them. There are some crates and libraries that do rely on you using the nightly channel. And as a result, it definitely is useful to have all three of these installed. Now on Windows you can use MSVC as well as GNU. So I'm using MSVC which stands for Microsoft Visual C compiler whereas GNU is the Linux compiler. All right so I have a few little things written down here and I'll put all of these in the description box so you guys can take a look at them yourselves. So first we want to check for updates for Rust Up. And you do this by running Rust Up self update. Then you want to check for updates for Rust itself and it will go through each of the channels here and see if there is an update and then update them. So we just run rest up update. When working with these tools, you definitely at least want the nightly release. You run rust up update nightly and this will automatically install a nightly channel for you. Then you want to install three components. These components are mainly for the RLS plugin, which stands for Rust Language Server. The first one of these is called the RLS Preview. I just put in the toolchain for Nightly. Now you'll see here that I get an error, and it says here toolchain Nightly does not contain component RLS Preview for target. When this happens, then you're going to have to choose to install it on the stable toolchain. So I can go ahead and install this on the stable, which I already have. As you can see here, it says it's up to date. Now I also need to install Rust Analysis on Stable Toolchain as well, so I run it like this. And finally, I need to install Rust Source on the Stable Toolchain. One thing to note is it's actually quite common that you'll have to install the source for the Nightly Toolchain as well, and we'll get to why that is. But essentially, all the source is is just the uncompiled source for the Rust Standard Library. And we use this in our RLS plugin so that we can actually look at the standard library library and look at definitions for functions and things. So after you install all these components, you want to create an environmental variable called Rust source path. Your environmental variable should look like this. So 
all capitals, Rust source path, and then it should point to your user profile dot Rust up tool chains, stable lib, Rust lib, source, Rust, and source. Now this is where the Rust source was installed on my computer. And if you're on Windows, this is where it will be installed on your computer as well. You want to create this variable so that VS Code can actually find that source folder. If you've installed it on the nightly and you want to use the nightly instead, then you just replace stable with nightly. If you've installed it on the beta, then you just replace beta with stable, etc. If you want to find out where your source is installed, you just type in rust c dash dash print syst root, and this will work on all systems. So it'll work on Linux, it'll work on Mac OS, and it'll work on Windows, and it will give you the root directory for where your tool chain is. If you run this and then you look for the lib folder right after that, and then the rust lib folder, and then the source folder, etc., you'll find your source directory. Directory. All right, so doing this will allow you to do things like this. So if I click go to definition on from, it will actually open up the file and I can take a look at, you know, what the definition actually looks like. And you also get the, and you also get the peek at definition command as well, which allows you to just open up this mini window here. Now there is an error that can happen on Windows and that's if you try to look at the definition and you get an error that appears on the top saying something like cannot find the library. If this happens then there is a quick fix that you can run. So you want to go back into your terminal and you want to open up an elevated command prompt. So you want to run it as administrator. Then you want to make a symbolic link between your program files, Microsoft Visual Studio Code source folder and your Rust source directory. So this is the same directory that we were looking at before. And you just use this MK link backslash big D to do this. So this is only for Windows and it will only work in an elevated command prompt. All right, so now that we have all these installed, our RLS plugin should be working perfectly fine. And if you look at the bottom left corner here, you'll see it'll say RLS done or it'll say RLS working. If it's not working, it'll say RLS cannot connect and you'll get like an error up here as well. You'll also probably see that racer is not working and then you'll have like a yellow code down here in the bottom right that says you're missing Rust tools. You can click that to install the tools through Visual Studio Code, but I don't recommend doing that because normally it doesn't work out. So what you wanna do is you wanna type in Rust up default nightly. So you can switch from your stable channel to your nightly channel. Once you do this, when you type in cargo, you're actually typing in the cargo version that is based on the nightly release rather than the stable release. Now we do this to install Rust FMT nightly. Rust FMT itself is depreciated. You need to get the Rust FMT dash nightly crate otherwise it won't work. You also may find that when you hit this command, it'll say that there's a binary that exists. You can use the dash dash force flag to force it to reinstall. And I recommend doing that if you run into some snags. Make sure that you're installing this on the nightly or the beta channel. Otherwise you could run into some problems because Rust FMT nightly is not on the stable channel, at least not right now. Next, you want to install Racer and you can use this force flag as well if you have to, though typically with Racer, you won't have to. Finally, you want to install Rust Sim. So this is another piece that's needed by the plugin. You want to install this on Nightly as well. All right, so after you have all that installed, you may find that you open up Visual Studio Code and it'll say Racer has crashed. And when you click on it, it'll say something like, you cannot find your source directory, even though it's pointing to the proper environment variable that you created earlier. If that happens, then there's a way that you can fix it. For Linux, you create a, an environmental variable called LD library path. And this will be your Rust C print root with lib appended to it. If you're on Mac, you need to create a dyld library path, and it's basically the same directory. And then on Windows, you just append this directory to your path. So you don't have to create an independent environmental variable. You just have to point your path towards where you have your source directory installed. Once all that happens, you should now have access to a format document. So for instance, save on format, you should also gain a few more snippets and racer should be working properly. 
and you won't have the little error here that says that you need the tools. Also, there are a few things that you can do inside of your actual editor. So first you want to set Rust mode to RLS. This is for the RLS plugin, obviously. Then you want to set your Rust client.channel to the channel that you installed RLS on. So if you installed RLS on the stable channel, then you want to set it to stable like I did. If it's on your nightly, then you want to set it to nightly. And if it's on the beta, then you want to set it to beta. You can also set things like format on save here and check on save. I've set these to true. These are optional though. These are the two main ones that you want to set and I'd recommend setting these either before or after you finish all of the installation of the tools and the components. Anyway guys, doing all of this should allow you to have a fully working Visual Studio Code installation with Rust working on it. I believe there are versions of these plugins for Atom. Sublime Text has its own versions. Emacs does use some of these components too. Vim uses these components as well. Basically you're going to end up installing all these components no matter what editor you're going to use. So anyway, I hope this video helped you. I know that it can be a bit daunting to get all this working, especially because we have three different channels. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe and like. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment box below. And if you dislike this video, then by all means, downvote it as much as you'd like. Have a good day.